Roger Meadmore and Alan Traskell were the first owners and they met up in America and they did a road trip around America and liked all the um, diners and things like that and they thought they'd bring the concept back here. Permission was given on the 19th of May 1965 for the place to open. It took them quite a while to, to settle things through because people thought they were absolutely balmy opening up a restaurant that just served pancakes. But it seemed a success, everyone was quite curious. And so people came along and in that day, they only had the front room, which sits about 10 or 12 people. But when they brought it back here, they had lots of trouble because things like flour at that stage wasn't refined enough to make pancake mix. Um, so they were importing their pancake mix from America and they were importing um, maple syrup from Canada. You had to order it on time, otherwise the St Lawrence froze. And as soon as the St Lawrence froze, it has to go by road and then by air. And because there's a small alcoholic content in the maple syrup, it had to be certified and classified, and it became very expensive to transport it by air. But the place got packed day and night, right through the night. But then it just kept on going, we just never got to close the door. And one night after we'd, we'd finished work, another shift had taken over, uh, Roger said, do you think we should go 24 hours? So let's do it. He actually threw the key away from the front door. And we all just looked and said, are you mad? And we just never looked back on it. Our business then was maybe just a coffee or a pancake and then say all their good nights. There was nowhere in Adelaide they could do that, except a pizza place down the Boston Highway Street. I mean, Mum and Dad would have had their stories to tell and I've got my stories to tell. Everything gets broken. We've replaced almost every fitting that you can imagine in place. Like um, one time this gentleman came in um, in a Superman costume, you know, cape and all, and he ran into P room over there, climbed up on the tables and chairs and swung from the light fittings and swung from one light fitting to the next. And then the light fittings collapsed and pulled all the way down um, out of the roof and he landed on the table, got up, shook himself and ran off. You know, it's not to say the people that come in at midnight are any worse than the ones coming in through the day because we've had just as much damage done during the day as what we have had at night. Well, the worst people for stealing were the elderly, elderly people, especially ladies. They'd come in, they'd have their pancakes, and they'd eat them all, and they'd nicely wrap the cuddly up, drops in the back. I remember being out the back one time and I was cleaning up out the back and a, a man yelled, Jolly, quick. So I'm like on my knees and I've got all this stuff. So I get up and I rush in the restaurant and this big disaster was happening. This person was fighting and was getting all out of control. I came down and I calmed it all down and shooed them all out. And I said to the boys that were on the cooks, I said, geez, you called me at the right time. And they said, no, we didn't. And they said, we never called you. This place had a resident ghost, a real McCoy. It still has, he hasn't gone anywhere. I'm too practical, I, I don't believe in things like this. Anyway, we employed a couple from the UK. The guy was a big bruiser. And he one day went down the back. He came flying nice. out, white to go, and said, there's a guy in the passageway. Now there's no way out. And he was absolutely serious. I mean, he was, had the shakes. We all went to have a look, there's nothing there. And he pointed right to where it was, and I said, well, that's strange because that's the, the area that the staff complain they sometimes hear something. And suddenly, for the first time in my life, I became a, a very slight believer that there might be something. But I still think it was a roofing iron loose. I have to believe that for my sanity. And then we did, uh, a couple of years ago, big renovations um, in the kitchen area and really weird stuff happened. It never did things on people. Like the, um, the workmen were working in the area in the coffee room and they just pulled down the walls and they did this, did that, stood outside and as they stood outside, the entire ceiling just collapsed. This is getting a bit dangerous here. So I went and I sat at the back and I said, look, Murphy, we're not leaving. <laughs> I said, we're just renovating the place. I said, but you're scaring the hell out of the workmen. Some of them just don't want to come back. I mean, can you just take it easy on them a little bit? And um, we didn't really have much problem after that. Um, that front room was the first detective station in Adelaide, okay. and downstairs is the, the cells. So it's very easy to put things together with imagination. Nevertheless, having cells there and having strange things happening. It makes a good story, Judy. Julie's actually worked very hard on trying to re retain how it was when she took over. 
I've brought in my own thoughts and my own ideas, but they've also been tainted with, you know, what I was brought up with. So I've still got mum and dad's ideas and their morals. And I suppose, you know, that if one of my children actually takes over after me, they'll bring their uniqueness into it. I might be running it until I'm a grandmother and maybe one of the grandchildren might take it over because like mum still um, works here with me and she's still one of the fastest pancake cooks mm -hmm. you know that there is she's one of the only ones that can keep up with me aren't you mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>